and sisters for coming out this time once again uh, to welcome you to our community and to uh, thank you for being here and listening to us today. We have much to cover today uh, as we seek to understand uh, honoring uh, Yohiwa, honoring God. So. Let's, uh, we got a couple of readings today, and of course there are many different readings that I could have chosen from for this occasion, but um, I wanted to pick a couple that most people are familiar with, and ones that are very popular, so that people have an understanding of, of, the, of the word verses. So our first reading today is going to be from the Hebrew Bible, book of Genesis, chapter 18, 1 through 8. Okay, Genesis 18, 1 through 8. God appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk in the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. And our reading uh, in the New Testament today is from the book of Romans. And we're looking at Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21, although we will be focusing primarily on 9 through 13. But our reading begins in chapter 12, verse 9. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve God. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend the hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought of what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says God. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good.
You know, when we think about it, our table is not our own. Our table is God's table. But, you know, how can we how can we really set a good example for others to follow and bring honor to God if we don't really know what God expects from us? Well, as we look at our Indian religious culture and your religious tradition, honoring the sacredness of God and the sacredness of all life are at the core of who we are and what we stand for, what we do. It's how we live. And it's often uh, challenging to distinguish and to, to discern uh, from God's perspective what brings God on. And we hear a lot of people talking about let's glorify God, bring Lord glory to God. Well, that's well and good, but you know, God is God. God's got all the glory. That's it. And but when it comes to us as God's representatives in this creation, especially on this particular planet, in where the area where we live, especially here in North America and in our case, in the heart of Indian country, in Oklahoma, uh, right now, we uh, we have to discern, you know, what is it that brings God honor through us. When other people look at us, and none of us are perfect, but when people look at us, can they say that we are honoring God in all that we do and all that we say? And you know that people aren't the least bit concerned so much with the words out of our mouths as they are with our deeds. And so, but from God's perspective, what does it mean to honor God? You know, back in the day in the Hebrew Bible, they did a lot of sacrifices. Uh, and there's many, many references and many stories in, in the Hebrew Bible about uh, you know, thousands of bulls and calves and doves and everybody being sacrificed to uh, for forgiveness and to and to show honor to God. But uh, you know clearly when Christ came along, the, the sacrificing wasn't really that big of a deal to God. It was just a way of getting the people to come together and to think about how important it was to to behave in an honorable way a way that would bring honor to God. And so Christ changed that and said, especially here as we look at the book of Romans, that there are specific ways that are consistent with God's teachings to the people from the time of Moses all the way up and that parallel American Indian religion and culture. And back into our Indian religious tradition, one of the fundamental core aspects of our values is hospitality. We bring honor to God by treating all people as family, regardless of who they are or where they come from. I have never been to an Indian home where I wasn't offered something to drink, something to eat. That's the norm. For example, you know, I remember, uh, you know, there, 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 there are tensions between many different nations across North America. There are old, old stories, old wounds, and there's politics everywhere. You know, with limited resources, everybody's trying to, trying to get by. Uh, instead of the competing over hunting grounds these days, now it's competing over financial resources and access to jobs. And there are many reservations that are in deep, deep trouble when it comes to unemployment, poverty, on the risks. And so, uh, we, uh, my wife and I, we've been to many of them, worked at many of them. 
And so, uh, you know, for example, uh, Tao Squell, the grandfather of Bernal, who was crossed over many years ago, he would, uh, he would have these gatherings and welcome the people, anybody who wanted to come. And we'd show up at the door, and we'd walk in, and we'd sit down at the table, and they would give us a huge feast. And he and I were friends for many, many years. We did ceremonies together. We helped each other out with wherever we needed. You know, he was he was getting up there in years, so he used to bring in the firewood he needed, and uh, as much as I was able. And uh, so. The hospitality came regardless of politics, regardless of theology, regardless of cultural differences, regardless of sexual orientation. And likewise, the same took place out in Arizona when the Navajo Nation went out there helping with you know, protests in Big Mountain, and hospitality extended all the way, right down the line. Uh, and I can say the same thing for every reservation I've ever been to, north, south, east, west. It is part of, it is a common ground among all Indians to extend hospitality, even among Indians. And not because we believe we're going to be punished by God if we don't, but simply because it's what we would like to have done for us. It's the right thing to do. Now in Christianity, the same teaching can be found going all the way back in the Hebrew Bible. And we see here Abraham the father of the nations. The, the Jews and the Arabs both claim their ancestry back to Abraham. So right there from the get-go, from day one, Abraham, we look in, in Genesis, I'll back up a little bit, and I'll come back to Romans here in a little bit because I've got a few more things to say about that. But uh, if we go back to Genesis here, we look and we see how important hospitality was to Abraham. It was so important that he's sitting outside his tent on a hot day, so we clearly know he doesn't want to do a whole lot. He's sitting in the front of the tent there, it was a cool shade, it's a hot day, who wants to go outside when it's hot, work hard. He wasn't in for that. But, when the strangers come into his line of sight, he doesn't just stand and wait for them to walk up to him. He doesn't get up and go inside his tent and act like he never saw them. He gets up and he runs to them. You know he's wearing wool because that's about the only thing they had. He runs to them. And then he, he bows down before them with his face in the ground. Down to the ground said, hold on there, let me get you something to eat, something to drink, it's hot, you're probably hungry. And they're like, wow, that's cool, we'll hang out, go ahead. And of course he didn't have a refrigerator that he could go to and pull things out, and a cabinet full of canned goods that he could pull out. So, no, he had to go into his wife, and he had her get out the best flour, not the cheap stuff, the best flour. and make three cakes of bread. That's a lot. And he ran out to the field. He didn't walk, he didn't stroll, he didn't get on his camel or pony or whatever he might have had. Didn't jump into his four by four and run to the store. He ran to his herd. We don't know how far it was, but I guarantee you it wasn't next door because it stank of a herd of goats and cow is not all that to be around. But he ran out there Picked out the best cat, not the one that had a broken leg. 
picked out the best calf, brought it over to her servant and said, butcher and cook it. Now this takes hours. But they did it. And then he brought it to them. He sat down and he stood by them while they ate. He didn't eat it himself. They ate. And that is hospitality. And that is bringing honor to God. And I will have to tell you right now, based on my research readings, and I'm doing more, but there is one consistent commandment that I find throughout the entire Hebrew Bible that God puts ahead of everything. You can look at Psalms, Proverbs, right down the line. Hospitality is at the top of the list of God's requirement. If you are not extending hospitality to the people, you are not living according to God's desires, God's law. Simple as that. I know there are hundreds of rules and regulations and laws in the Old Testament, and most people tend to focus on the Ten Commandments as if they were the end-all and be-all of the rules and regulations, but they're not. But flat out, the Old Testament, Hebrew Bible, whatever you want to call it, God required hospitality to be given to all people by his servants. That was the expectation. That's how God can say, this person is living my heart. They generally desire to extend hospitality. And that's why Abraham had God's favor, because Abraham was overflowing with hospitality. There you go. Now we get back to Romans, where we have a different personality, the personality of Paul, writing this letter to the Romans to help inspire them. And basically, you know, because Romans is one of the most, if not the most popular book in the New Testament, especially here in the Midwest. Most people tend to focus more on Paul than they do on Jesus, but, you know, where the assumption is is that Paul is speaking with Christ's voice. And we'll save that discussion for another day, but, but the point is is that Romans is extremely popular. And so, which is one reason I chose Romans versus 1 Thessalonians or Peter or John or whatever. This, this, right here we see in chapter 12 that it begins first out in, in 1. We see that, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of challenges. You've got the Jewish community in, in Rome. And then you've got a bunch of non-Jews because Paul was all about helping the Gentiles, his entire uh, ministry was focused that direction and uh, so there's there's ongoing challenges about everybody getting along and treating each other well animosity arising you know human behavior in a social environment what more can I say you know people being people so Paul is saying hey here's what God expects of you of me of everybody who calls themselves a believer doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you're from, here it is. And we see in chapter 12, starting with verse 9, well, a little bit prior, but focusing on verse 9, Paul is laying out there, let your love be genuine. Okay? That in itself is huge. But it's actually a foundation. If your love's not genuine, if you are not being genuine towards people, they're going to know it. It stands out. If you're just saying and doing things to put on the show, they're going to know it. And Paul is saying, okay, you know, if you are genuine in your love, the rest of this is going to be easy. But he's detailing how we know if your love is genuine. 
and he goes on and says, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. So here we have the honor word right there. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve God, rejoice in hope, bringing hope to the people. In other words, you know, don't be a down. Help lift people up. Instead of sucking the life out of things, bring life to things. Uh, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. And we get to verse 13, and this is this is where it's really a big deal, because this ties right into the whole honoring God. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Now, Paul is a Jew who was raised, trained in the Hebrew Bible. Culturally embedded to know what God expects of the Israelites. Paul knew that hospitality brings honor to God and is required of God of the people. Now, from a Christian perspective, when you're talking about Israelites, you're talking about everyone who is a believer automatically. We're all children of God. We're all in God's family. So this applies to us. Right or wrong, good or bad. This is what God expects of us. Right at the core of our being. God can tell, and the people can tell, if we're being genuine in our love, and being, whether or not we're bringing honor to God by whether or not we are extending hospitality to the people. Now, in, in verse 13, Paul's linking it together. Many churches, and I've been to many different denominations, many churches in North America, around the world, Christian churches all over the world. And especially here in the Midwest, there is this click thing going on. And everybody talks about it. You can sit down and point out which churches, if you're not related to somebody in that church, you're an outsider. And it's not, it's not limited to one specific denomination. It's many different denominations that this goes on. You're not a friend, family member, forget. You're not welcome. And they let you know that. And Paul is saying, contribute to the needs of the saints, which means help one another out. Help fellow believers out who are in need. First thing this morning, first thing this morning, I come down to Eastside to have our sacred hoop service and, and uh, uh, right away, Pastor Fred, who, who is the pastor, the senior pastor here at Eastside, he gets a phone call. I'm the first person to talk to him this morning, walk into his office. He gets a phone call. It's a fellow street minister who needs help financially getting to a, a place where he has been uh, given an opportunity to be of service. Did Fred find an excuse? Did he say so? Oh, we we don't have the budget for it, or I can't I can't go to that much trouble, or I got other things I got to be doing? No. First words out of his mouth. Well, we can help you out with that. I'll meet you at the bus station. We'll take care of it. I'm just saying. That's what Fred right there is living that verse. Right out the gate. First phone call in the morning. Now that is bringing honor to God. And Paul ties it together. Not only are you supposed to help the ones you know, supposed to help the strangers and boy I'll tell you right now Paul does not add any caveats to this he's not saying in here extend the hospitality to white people to heterosexuals to only those you feel safe with 
Paul is saying, extend hospitality to strangers. It doesn't matter whether they're red, yellow, black, white, gay, straight, whatever. A stranger is a stranger, but we're all children of God. If we fail to live by this, we are not honoring God. If we turn someone away from our door, we have the means of helping in some way. Or we know somebody who can help if we're not able. And we don't make an effort to hook them up. We are violating God's will and commands for us. And that's a big, it really is. And I've seen and heard that many times. I've seen that happen many times. So, people not being welcome at the table. Because they're different in some way that somebody else has a moral superiority. And I gotta tell you, I was affiliated and we were helping out some, some friends, Mennonite friends, at a church where we live. And you know, some of the people were hospitable and most of them weren't. Because we were different. And uh, we didn't believe that we didn't go that theological bent, the extremism, you know, the, what they call the conservative Christian thought of, you know, if you don't look like us, don't act like us, and don't walk and talk like us, then we're not going to be there for you. We're not going to be your neighbor. And I see that a lot here in Oklahoma, where it's me first instead of us. I hear it every day. People excluding others and refusing to help others in need and making all kinds of irrational excuses for it and justifications for it. And that does not honor Yohiwa. And our priority, our important aspect in this is we have to recognize that there is a level of spiritual maturity that we need to achieve in order to fully grasp and understand why God expects it. Would you want somebody living in your house who was selfish, greedy, and self-centered? Would you put up with them all day long? Every day? For all eternity? It'd be rough. And through achieving spiritual maturity, we come to understand the reality that we are all children of God. We are all one family. And as such, treating one another helps us to grow spiritually. Treating one another with dignity and respect, showing hospitality demonstrating our genuine love for God and for all life through hospitality, through bringing honor to God. Now, there's a lot more to be said about this. But keep in mind that to honor our Creator and set a good example for others to follow behooves us to extend support to our partners in ministry and to provide hospitality to all the people who come our way, and even those who don't. We have an obligation to help those who are in need, wherever they are, whoever they might be. If we're not doing it, we're not extending that hospitality, we are not honoring God. And when we do, we are showing all people that they are welcome at God's table. For this is as it should be. So it is. Walk in beauty. Walk in beauty.